Well, hello, friends. Uh, I'm Pastor Michael with uh, Heart to Heart Refinement Ministries org, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing uh, part three of my playlist series on the book I wrote called "The Twenty Three Steps to Following Jesus," and that's going to get started right after these messages. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Well, my friends, what I usually do in my online school at uh, heart to heart refinement school .teachable com is I do a lot of uh, PowerPoint uh, teaching with uh, uh, slides on the screen. So I'm going to back up and uh, um, get started with the slides. And I want to read some scriptures to you about the life of Jesus. So uh, let's get started. Okay, as you can see, I put a... Uh, a slide up on the screen here and it says what is the life of Jesus and how does it affect my life I think that's something that we need to know is what that life of Jesus is and how it affects our life what I did was Google the top 14 Bible verses on the life of Christ and I will share them with you below so we're gonna, I'm going to share these 14 uh, scriptures with you I think it's important to take this to the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say about the life of Jesus and uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to dive into John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's the whole uh, module scripture for all the four modules of our heart refinement uh, school. Okay. Now we see uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his uh, only son or only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Then we move on to Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we'll move on to Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who lives loves me and gave himself for me. Okay? And we're going to move on to John 5, 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. John eleven twenty five. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. Okay? What does it mean to live in Christ Jesus? What does that mean? So when we talk about the life of Jesus, my friends, we've got to talk about what it means to imitate the life of Jesus. So let's read some more scriptures. Uh, here's another slide. In John 15, uh, in John, sorry, let me start over. In 2 uh, Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new uh, creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And now, in John 11, that's what I was looking at, John 11, 25 through 26 Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, shall not, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Okay, and then in John 10.10, 10, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And then again in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Who is it that strengthens us? Christ Jesus. Okay. Hebrews 13.5, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. <clears throat> Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then in 1 John 5, 20, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, 
He is the true God of eternal life. Now, as I uh, take that off the slide, I want to come and talk to you for a minute. At the end of this um, um, slide teaching, I'm going to show you the, the remaining steps of following Jesus in this uh, article. Okay, But let's go back and let's uh, um, view some more of the slides. So as I come back here and uh, gonna put another slide uh, on my screen here. And this takes me to the whole uh, um, chapter of Romans 8. I know this is gonna be a couple of slides, but I, I believe when we wanna introduce the life of Christ uh, to somebody, this is probably a good place to start. We need to uh, actually introduce them to Romans 8, which basically says at the top, um, life in the spirit. I'm going to get started here, and we're going to read this. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free. In Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walks not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Verse 8. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9. You, how, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If in, the, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, all through the body is death because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of God who raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. And now you see uh, we are heirs with Christ because of what this is saying, right? So heirs to Christ. What does that mean? So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Okay? A lot of things going into this scripture, my friends. Uh, we need to really pay attention to Romans 8. Let me put a uh, next slide up on the screen that uh, will start us out on verse 16. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Provided we suffer with Him in order that we may also be glorified in Him. And then you're going to see the words uh, future glory there. And in verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy, worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of God who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has 
been gro groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For we, for who hopes for what he sees? That's a question mark. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in according to the will of God. And we know that those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, also glorified. Okay? And now as we go to another slide here, I know that this is a long chapter to read, my friends. And it's important. It's important that we understand this if we want to understand the true life of who Jesus Christ is. So at the top of this slide, you see that it says uh, God's everlasting love. In verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who does not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him gloriously give all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect if the God who justifies? Okay, it is God who justifies. Verse 34. Who is to condone? That's a question. Who is to condone? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, he was raised. Who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger? Or sword? That's also a question mark. Verse 36. As it is written, for your sake we shall be we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37. Now in these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in this creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, that was a, a really long, really, really, really long chapter. And if uh, you were here with me, I would be uh, asking you to take turns in reading this for me. If I had a group of people here, I'd be asking them the same thing. So now on that same side, we have uh, another uh, point here. And now for the first defined scripture that I feel defines getting to know the life of Jesus is found in John 17. Okay, the high priestly prayer, in verse 17. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, and the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you, give, you have given him, all this is eternal life. And this is eternal life, that, you, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Amen. Amen. 
Hey Amen. I'm going to take a little break because uh, we got to read some more uh, of that scripture. So I knew the slide that you see uh, starts with uh, verse 6. I have manifested your name to the people whom you give me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have came to know in truth that I come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Verse 10. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Verse 12. While I was with them, and not one of them had been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled, but now I am coming to you. And these things I speak to the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and the word has hated the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I did not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they may also be sanctified in truth. Okay, I'm going to stop there before I read verse 20. Jesus is talking about his disciples that he was with at that time, but he's also talking about us that are disciple followers of Jesus, okay? So let's go on and let's read uh, verse 20. I do not ask for these things, but also for those who will believe in me through this their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that they have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I am in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that they sent me and loved me, even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. My friends, we read a lot of scriptures uh, at Heart to Heart Refinement Ministries School. And uh, it's important that we understand the scriptures because they're man read, but God inspired. We need to understand that. So let's finish the scripture out as I put uh, another slide on the screen here for you. Verse 25, O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and those know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Wow, that was, that was a lot of reading. Two long chapters that, that I read to you, okay? So now you see a, a Bible on this uh, screen here, okay? And now for the prayer that leads me into imitating the life of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is a prayer right out of the scripture in uh, Jud 24, verse 25. In Jud 24 and 25. <clears throat> Now unto him who can keep me from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with uh, exceedingly joy, verse 25, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and maj majesty, domain and power, both now and forever. Amen. What a mar marvelous prayer that is, is to know that we are covered under the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, now my next slide here says, 
to imitate the life of Christ, we need to renew our minds. But how? Okay? How do we renew our minds? Okay? If we don't renew our minds, we're not going to really truly know the life of Jesus. So how? How can we renew our minds? Let's, let's read here. By the renewing of their minds, we are perfectly useless as Christ's exalted Christians if all we do is conform to the world around us and the key to not wasting our lives with this kind of success and prosperity, Paul says, is being transformed. Do not be transformed to this world, but be transformed. That word is used one time in all the Gospels, namely about Jesus on the mountain of transformation. Transfiguration, the mountain of transfiguration, same word. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Okay? Very powerful thing there, right? Okay? More than external transformation, I point this out for one reason to make the point that the non conformity to the world does not primarily mean the external avoidance of worldly behaviors that's included but you can avoid all kinds of worldly behaviors and not be transformed his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light something like that happens to us spiritually and morally mentally first on the inside and then later at the resurrection on the outside transformation is not switching from the to-do list of the flesh to the do list of the law when paul re places the list, the works of the flesh, he does not replace it with the works of the law, but the fruit of the Spirit. The Christian alternate to immoral behavior is not a new list of moral behaviors. It is the triumph, power, and transformation of the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our treasure. God has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Okay, and that's out of 2 Corinthians 3, 6. So, how do we, how do we transform our heart by the renewing of our mind? Isn't it uh, kind of important to understand transforming our heart? Our heart is what's affected by the influences of this world. If we can't learn to transform our mind... By renewing it, our heart's going to be in jeopardy. So let's put another slide on the screen here and let's check it out. Okay. Okay, so as you see, I put another slide on the screen. Okay, right here it is. So transformation is a profound blood sought, spirit wrought change from the inside. In Romans 12, verse 2, Paul is now focused on one essential means of transformation, the renewal of the mind. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does this actually mean, my friends? What does it mean to renew your mind, okay? I have uh, so four uh, bold points there. Let's read them. If you long to break loose from the conformity of the world, you will renew your mind. If you long to be transformed and new on the inside out, you will renew your mind. If you want to be free from mere duty-driven Christianity and do what you love to do because what you love to do is what you ought to do, you will be refined in your mind. If you long to offer up your body as a living sacrifice so that your whole life becomes a spiritual act of worship and displays the worth, displays the worth of the world, then give yourself with all your might to pursuing this renewal of your mind. Because the Bible says the this is the key to transformation. Do not be conformed to, the, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so I'm going to ask some personal reflection questions here. What is wrong with the human mind? Okay, that was discussed in uh, part one of this playlist series, the, the Way of Jesus. Okay, number two, what does our, why does our minds need re renewed? Okay, I discuss that in the truth of Jesus in part two of this playlist, okay? And number three, what does this renewal look like, okay? I'm teaching you this renewal in this third part of this uh, of this playlist, okay? Number four, which we're going we're gonna to be doing next time, is how can we pursue and enjoy this renewal? That's access to God, okay? 
let's uh, put another uh, slide on the on the screen here. And I'm sorry that this is taking a while, but we have a lot to cover here. And I don't want to make this part one or part two. So let's just keep moving on. And if you want to pause it and come back later and watch the rest of it, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay. And if you haven't already subscribed uh, um, to get the notifications of when I do a, a, a video, if you hit the subscribe button, which is down there, that'd be cool. Okay. And so let's, let's look at this one. And this is talking about the problems with our minds. Okay. There are many who think that the only problem with the human mind is that it does not have access to the knowledge it needs. So education becomes the great instrument of redemption, personal and social. If people just got more education, they would not use their minds to invent elaborate scams and sophisticated terrorist plots and complex schemes for embezzlement and fast talk, foul mouth mentally nimble, radial rudeness, and people just got more education, okay? Well, what education are we really talking about here? Is this the education of the world? Or is this the education that Jesus wants us to have to renew our mind? Okay? The Bible has a far more profound analog analogies of the problem. In Ephesians 4.23, Paul uses a striking phrase to peril Romans 12.2. He says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, what is the, what in the world does that mean, the spirit of the mind? It means at least this. The human mind is not a sophisticated computer managing data, which is then faithfully presented to the heart for appropriate emotional responses. Okay? Remember that the, the human mind is not a sophisticated computer managing data. Okay, remember that. The mind has a spirit. In other words, a mind has what we call a mindset. It doesn't just have a view. It has a viewpoint. It doesn't just have a power to perceive and detect. It also has a posture, a demeanor, a bearing, an attitude, and bent on other things. By renewing the spirit of your mind. The problem with our minds is not merely that we are f finite and don't have all the information. The problem is that our minds are fallen. They have a spirit and bent on other things. A mindset that is hostile to the absolute supremacy of God. Our minds are bent on not seeing God as infinitely more worthy of praise than we are or that we make or achieve. That's a powerful thing there, uh, of what that's saying, my friends. Okay, let's uh, move on to another slide. Okay, this is what we see in Romans 1, verse 28. Since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a biased mind, a biased mind. This is who we are by nature. We do not want to see God as worthy of knowing Him well and treasuring him above all things you know this is true about yourself because of how little effort you expand to know him and because of how much effort it takes to make your mind spend the time to get to know god better okay wow I have to pause there for a minute, people, because that, that, that really does make a lot of sense. Okay, Let's read on here. That's what's wrong with our minds. This illumines the relationship between verse 1 and 2 of Romans 12. Verse 1 says that we should present our bodies, our whole lives, to display the worth of God and all He has for us in Christ. Now it makes perfect sense when verse 2 says this, For that... To happen, our minds must be renewed. Okay, now we're going to ask why. Because our minds are not by nature God-worshipping minds. They are by nature self-worshipping minds. That is the spirit of our minds. That hurts my heart to even have to read that, okay? So, who renews our mind? Okay, the Holy Spirit renews our mind. This brings us fully to the remedy of how we obey Romans 12 too. Be transformed in the renewing of your mind. First, before we can do anything, a double action of the Holy Spirit is required. Now, what does refinement mean? So, 
you see renew and you receive refine, right? So refinement is a noun that means the process of removing impurities or unwanted elements from a substance. In this case, the substance is in our heart, okay? Now, on this slide here, you're seeing a uh, cross with Jesus hanging on it, right? Let's read that slide. To understand the renewing of your mind and the transformation of our heart uh, from the world's way to the ways of Jesus in the 23 steps I am teaching you, let's look at the steps of why we follow the life of Jesus. The steps I'm referring to come out of, of a scripture I found in the Bible. Let's read it together. Okay, this is out of Isaiah 11, 2 through 3. Okay, the life of Jesus comes from this scripture and it introduces the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he who delights in the fear of the Lord, he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, nor deceive, decide what he hears with his ears. So what are these steps? What are these final steps to the life of Jesus and uh, how can we apply them, okay? Now we're gonna see here. Now I'd like to share a, a few scriptures to transcend the life of Christ to bring the helper to us, which is the Holy Spirit. So in John 14, uh, verse 15 through 21, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, if you love me, Keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world, cannot accept, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live you also will live. On the day you will re realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show themselves myself to them. Okay, and then uh, in John 15, 26 through 27. Okay, John 15, uh, is part of my uh, third module on Heart to Heart Refinement uh, Ministries program. I'm looking at the map view because it's on my wall right here. So let me read John 15, 26 through 27 for you. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you will also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. At this time, my friends, what I like to do is I like to um, have you take a little tour with me. Um, what I like to do is go for a walk with Jesus as we walk with the Holy Spirit. I believe that this is something that we need to do. So give me about 10 seconds to um, arrange my camera and set up my room a little bit different. And we're going to take a walk with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I'll be back shortly. Well, okay, my friends, uh, remember I told you we was going to take a walk, and we're going to take a little walk with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. First of all, I want to introduce you again to uh, Jesus. Uh, you know that Jesus is a, a crutch that uh, hangs on my wall back here, and uh, you can see the cross there, and you can see the other crutch that's there. When we follow the ways of Jesus, Jesus has to live in our heart. We have to stay attached to him. We have to stay attached to the vine, okay? So, remember when I left the last video on the truth of Jesus, when Jesus um, leads us, we follow, okay? We follow Jesus. Wherever Jesus leads us, we're going to follow him, right? Okay, so when the problems of this world come our way, and as you can see on the wall here, I'm projecting the world right here, right? To me, this is busyness. To me... This is the hate of the world. This is non-Christians. This is uh, 
religious hypocrites. This is what the world represents to me. So when we encounter this, if we don't know how to walk with Jesus in our heart and the Holy Spirit, all we can do, my friends, is hop through life, even when Jesus is leading us. So what happens in this world? Okay, it wounds our heart. Okay, so let's say that my leg is injured because of the way of this world. Okay, I can no longer carry my own weight. I have to depend on Jesus to carry me. Okay, but I cannot put my foot down because it's wounded by the by the world, right? So all I can do is hop. All I can do is hop. I cannot walk because of the hardships of this world that wound my heart. And neither can you unless we introduce the Holy Spirit into our life. That's what the life of Jesus indicates, my friends. And now we take the Holy Spirit down from where it was at in heaven. And now we see the Holy Spirit. Okay, we see the Holy Spirit on that side. The Holy Spirit is also written right there. My friends, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are like our spiritual parents. If mom and dad are actually spiritual uh, leaders and spiritual nurturers, this is the indication that they're going to teach us this. But because we grew up in a world that isn't like that, I'm a spiritual father. Okay, I do a lot of spiritual father talk times. So now when we're wounded in this world, we have Jesus and we have the Holy Spirit that help us. Okay, so I'm going to back up and I'm going to teach you step 17 through step 23. And I'm going to introduce those to you. So let me back up over here. Okay. So now we understand that now we're broken because of the way of the world. The life of Jesus through this crutch, we believe in him. It goes in our heart. But we need an, also an, another helper. So the first step that we make on the crutches is step 17 to apply wisdom. So now I step. Now I can apply wisdom. Okay, step 18 is to apply understanding. So I take one more step and now I can get there, right? All right, but we're still broken, right? Now we have to apply step 19, which is learn to apply counsel. One more step. Now I'm not hopping, am I? Okay, step 21, learn to apply fortitude. Okay, one more step. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit because i got a few more steps to go to. So step 19, okay, we're dealing with the woundedness of our world. We're dealing with that woundedness in our heart. So step 19, we learn to apply knowledge, okay, and we can take another step, okay. And step 22, we learn to apply piety. What is piety? You're going to have to get involved in my online school to learn what piety means, but we can take one more step. Okay, now in step 23, we learn to apply the fear of the Lord. Okay, now we take one more step. Okay, those are the 23 steps to following Jesus. Okay, Jesus goes back up here, and the Holy Spirit comes back up here. When I go to a church and I uh, do a demonstration on how to bear the fruits of the Spirit, I take my crutches with me. I take my friends with me. And when I walk into that church on my crutches called Jesus and the Holy Spirit, people get that. People understand that. So my friends, I hope you don't uh, walk away from this uh, playlist series uh, on uh, the life of Jesus uh, lightly. Okay, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to play back from the first part of the playlist series that I did. I introduced you to the book, The 23 Steps to Following Jesus. I introduced you into the way of Jesus. I introduced you into the truth of Jesus. Now I introduce you into the life of Jesus. Those are the four areas, but we got one more to go, okay? We got to introduce you into the reason why we do all this. The reason why I wrote the book, 23 Steps to Following Jesus. Until that time comes, my friends, may God bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may Jesus always bring you joy.